Hey guys, Buck here at BTM Scale Modeling, and welcome back to another week on the bench. Uh, this week we did, we're not going to do much building. I did turn in and give um, Aeroport Hobby their course air today, which was great. They loved it. Um, but basically this is, um, as you can tell from the theme music at the start of the video, we're starting on the Voyager. Yes, I am ready to get started on this, this build. Um, the work will continue on the Apache, um, but that's going to be kind of my um, side bit um, as stuff where I, I hit a stopping point on the Voyager, I'll work on the Apache, and the same vice versa. When I hit a stopping point on the Apache, I'll finish work on the Vo start work on the Voyager. Um, I'm under no illusion this is going to be a big build. Um, the video is going to kind of go into that, but the synopsis is. Um, there will be scratch building. There will be immense lighting. There will be computer control boards from Ralph at Tenet Controls. Um, guys, I'm under no illusions. This is a big project. This is what I've been working up for. Also, this is going to be another build um, video series. Uh, I'm going to take you step by step through um, how I do this. I know I kind of showed you guys with the Enterprise D, but I'm going to go more into detail on how I connect um, strip LED strip tape, why I'm running the wiring I'm doing, why I'm doing things that I'm doing. Um, these things that work for me, um, and this is how I do my builds. Uh, guys, I want to encourage you, if you do see something in this build series you want to use, please go ahead and do it. I have no problem with that. If there's any questions about something that I've done in this build series, please leave it in the comments um, or email me at bucktmore at gmail.com and I will, I will answer for you. Um, so basically this video is going to be a reveal. Um, basically everything I've gotten for this kit and what my plans are with it. So with that, this is Mother's Day weekend and I want to wish all those moms out there a happy Mother's Day. Guys, wish your moms a happy Mother's Day. Wish your wife a happy Mother's Day. And uh, remember, guys, please go check out SciFiFantasy.com. If you're not a member with us yet, please hit the Join tab. Guys, check out Amazing Scale Modelers. Join that community. Check out the Model Shop. Um, guys, if you want to bring your models to life, check out Ralph at TenantControls.com. Also, guys, if you're not into the sci-fi, you like watching the builds, but you're more into um, modern era, like, World War II, military vehicles, all that, please go to check out Paul and Kenny's site at modelbuildersinternational.com. Check them out. Um, guys, this is a great community we belong to, so please help support everybody. And with that, let's get to the bench. Hey there, guys. Welcome back to the bench. And yes, it's that time. Um, we're going to do uh, a little unveil, take a look at the kit. Um, before I start any major work, in case you guys have never seen this kit unboxed before. Um, this is the Rebel uh, USS Voyager. And give me one second here, guys. I'll let you know the scale. It is a 1670 scale. Um, went to the website to get the scale because it doesn't show on the box. Uh, and... On the box it says it's a level 3, skill level 3, but on their website they're going to level 4. So, um, either here nor there, it doesn't matter, but it's a 1670 scale. And uh, this kit was actually made in Germany um, or Europe from the Germany Revelle part of the company. Uh, it's great box art. I mean, you know, very well done. Um, kind of like it because like most kits um, it uh, most kits you know you pull the top off you're good to go I like this one because it kept uh, it's like a standard box open the top you can keep everything where you want but you know I think it's it's very well packaged um, like I said I got this for Christmas and it's been on my big to-do list so we're gonna get started uh, so what we'll do is I want to start showing you the kit. Um, like I said, I've already opened it and I've washed it, uh, getting prepped and ready to go. So here is the saucer part. Um, I don't know if you can call a saucer in a secondary hull because uh, it's all kind of one ship. 
But here is the upper section. Um, very well detailed for the most part. Um, the lifeboats are raised up really well. Uh, you'll see all the window inserts now. I'll show you that here in a second and some things I'm going to do. So some great detail. Uh, big thing is uh, I'm going to take a lot of this off and add aftermarket photo etch, which I'll show you. Um, only little problem, and I don't know if you guys can see, you can see when it released from the mold, and that's not residue, that's actual um, heat that's kind of puffed up a little bit. So I'm sanding that down. A lot of flash, but that's okay. It's Revel. We're used to that. We'll take it down. We'll take care of it. Um, doing some studying the photos there are going to be some things i'm going to add like i said this is the this is my big project for the year uh, i know the enterprise d was big and long but that was setting me up for this um we're going to add stuff and I'll, I'll show you what i'm talking about here in a minute just want to go through the kit pieces so here's the upper hull here is the secondary hull um kind of goes together like so Again, it's very well detailed, um, very smooth, very clean lines, very good panel lines. Uh, I'm going to be excited. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this, the two parts for the secondary hull. Um, as you can tell, even putting it together, that's, there's a little bit of gap and warpage, but that can be taken care of by glue and you know some sanding and stuff. Uh, overall, like I said, it's very well done. Um, now there's a lot of stuff we're going to remove and add and enhance so but that's secondary hull there's the window sections that are come out lighted we go on and we'll move on to this piece um, basically it's in the cells and the hangar and the shuttle which I haven't decided what I'm going to quite do with that yet how I'm going to add that in but um, I know I want to keep the ship as a hull. I don't want to have the, the hangar door open, but I might on the display stand add the shuttle as a sidebar. Um, the nacelles are quite nice. Um, there does need to be some more added detail. They tried to do it here, but it, it's not working out. So we're going to add some more detail to that. Uh, here is the bottom section, the deflector, the main sensor array. Uh, thrusters, the deflector dish that's not on the clear part, and then the bottom. Um, this is the top. Here's where the shuttle bay is going to be and how it attaches to the rest of the ship in the lower section. Um, nice little raised detail. This is all raised lines. It, it's not uh, sunk in like I thought it would be, but again, neither here nor there. And then we have the torpedo section and the rest of the warp nacelles with the phasers so uh, again not not badly designed it, it, it is pretty well detailed um, nice a lot of intricate work is going to be done and then here's the part of the base which we won't be using um, I might incorporate it in I haven't decided yet because I'm really I really do like the low you know the insignia um, but haven't gotten that far figured out yet what I'm going to do. I'm uh, going to get there though. Uh, give me a second here. I'm going to put these pieces out of the way. We're going to go on and check out the instructions that come with it. So, guys, here are the Voyager instructions. And I'm going to zoom in just a bit here. Um, very well printed, very well detailed. Now... You might think, you know, it's supposed to be a skill level 3, skill level 4. It's going to be pretty intimate in the detailing on how to put this together, but it's really not. Standard instructions, um, the parts list, the paint list. I mean, they're, they're really good about, you know, percentages on what color to use for primary, where, you know, it gives you a great breakdown on the, the, the color. Um, and then... A good chunk of this is all about painting. As you can see here, guys, zoom out just a bit. As you guys can see, right now, right off the bat, it's all about painting. It's all about, you know, the different sections on the hull plating, 
um, to the sensor dish, to to the warp missiles, to you know, it, it's all about the paint. Then on page nine, it starts on how to put it together. Now it gives you shows you how to insert the clear pieces. Um, very abstract instructions. We're not going to be using the clear pieces. Um, I'm going to have to get some crystal clear because I'm going to use that when I do the windows and then show you what else we're going to do. So other than that, it's really not a difficult kit to put together. Um, it's just going to take you know a little time. So yeah, how to put the nacelles together, you know, because they make it where you can fold them up for warp and down for impulse. Um, not really a whole heck of a lot um, to it. Um, it's like I said, it's one, one, two, three, four, five pages total on how to build the kit. Then the last two, the last three pages actually is all the decals, um, all the placements, everywhere, everything goes. Like I said, it's just a a very rough um, drawing of the ship and the Gibby placement, uh, which is great because I mean it, it's great you can follow it really well because like I said when I show you this decal sheet, it's it's wow. Uh, <laughs> This one's gonna, you know, I thought some of these decals I've done before are amazing, but um, so here's our decal sheet, and let me really try to zoom in to do justice here. So this is the Rebel decal sheet, um, and as you can tell, there's a lot of little decals that we're gonna be applying. Um, unlike the Enterprise D. It had a couple of small ones, but nothing near as intricate as what we're looking at here. I mean, uh, you got decals for the, the lifeboat. You've got, you know, the insignia. You got the landing um, run up. You got the phaser banks. And then you just got all the little odds and ends. And then one thing I think I am going to do. Let's see here. I'm going to show you this, guys. Zoom in a little bit more and show you here is these uh, inserts, these window inserts. And I think I actually, uh, I'm thinking about trying to incorporate them um, just to give a little, little life to the inside of the ship. Not quite sure yet, um, but we'll see. Uh, but this is the nice decal sheet provided by Rebel. Uh, it's gonna be fun, it, 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 it will be. You know, a lot of us, we sometimes we cringe at decals, but hey, you know, it is what it is. And decals are part of what we do. So, moving on, here is what is next. And I'll take this out so you guys can see. Um, I will be photo etching, I will be adding the window inserts and all that. Just put it on the paper here to try to show you guys. And I'll zoom back in here so you can get a better look. So this is the photo etch. Um, very good. It's done by Paragraphics. Um, really looking forward to it. And as you can see where I was talking about on the primary, on the hull, these right here where you can add the clear plastic which they they do give you um, that's what these are for this is what's going to go in and that's why I'm going to use the crystal clear um, and do that for the windows so um, everything from the main sensor you know the forward sensors to the cargo hatches um, the transporter arrays um, uh, docking ports the the back side of the ship you know it they they really went really great to do this um, right here the the uh, captain's ready room and um, the briefing room so uh, 
really looking forward to applying these. Um, if you guys have never seen a paragraphic set of instructions, these guys do a phenomenal job on what, um, how to go about. Uh, definitely read through it, but they, they pretty much give you step by step. Um, like here on the bridge, uh, the A and B deck, or the A deck, you notice that they did give you a piece to do a template because uh, the windows aren't on the side like they should be. Um, we will be removing a lot of the detail from the top and adding the, the photo etch. But as you can see, it goes in and you add in the window inserts, uh, better cargo, you know, transport arrays, uh, where to cut, what to do, uh, even into right here, adding um, hatches where you would never normally see hatches because they just, you know, it doesn't add it. But that's that detail we're going for. That's that little extra oomph to do. Uh, and then back here, you know, taking stuff out, add to the impulse engines. Um, and then here on the bottom, that, that, that two-piece section of the secondary hull, um, this is actually for the engineering part for the warp, warp core hatches. So we'll remove a lot of that, a lot of this just aesthetic detail, and we'll actually add in this, this uh, better detail um, to give the ship more life. So that is photo etch from Paragraphics that I will be using. Uh, then we are also, because you guys know I'm a fan of Ralph, um, I use his products now exclusively for my Starship builds. Any pretty much lighting build, if he has it, we're going to do it. So Ralph ships everything in these great little packages. Um, so I'm going to show you. So the first thing, and this is a special request from my wife. Um, if you guys have used Ralph before, you know he did a um, ramp up for uh, the deflector dish on the refit. And we're actually going to use it um, for the Voyager deflector dish to ramp up uh, as a warm up. Uh, show you the little computer board for this. Look at that, guys. That's just cool, intricate. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so yes, we have that. We have the light, cathode. You know, Ralph supplies all of that. Ralph's great, great instructions. Um, so he begins, you know, he talks about placement. Like I said, this is designed for the Enterprise A refit or Enterprise refit. But also, he has done it so we can use it on the Voyager and pretty much any kind of um, ramp up you want to do. I mean, you can do engines with this ramp up, whatever. I mean, the sky's the limit for what you want to do, but we're using it for ramping up the deflector dish on the Voyager. And as you can tell, Ralph does really good, really detailed um, diagrams for how to wire and what to do. So that's the deflector dish ramp up. Then, Yes, um, we did, did do a little bit of money on this, but that's really cool. This is Ralph's control board for navigation, sounds, you name it, it's on there. I'm not going to take away if you guys want to add these things. Um, continue to watch, and I will explain it more when we start that process. But Ralph has outdone himself with this. Um, there's phaser fire, there's warp effect, and there's photon torpedoes. I mean, all the sound effects to this, um, and the warp flash on the nacelles, and then the speakers. So, with that kit, um, what you'll get is these two sound speakers, the wire ribbon, resistors, different resistors, but this is the main board. Uh, here's one of the main boards. This is the main board that controls all the lighting. This is going to control the flashing, um, everything, the warp, everything. And it's great because when you look at this kit, Ralph did it to where this, um, as you can see, this bottom section sits nice and flat. Ralph designed it 
to where it can either sit here or right here, but everything can sit up here into the main saucer. So, uh, but like I said, this is all the lighting control. And then here is the cool part is where we have the soundboard um, and a couple more different effects. Uh, and again, like I said, it just sits, you know, just sits effortlessly in here and can do it. And then the great thing is um, I got the remote control. So everything is sealed up. I don't have to worry about anything. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting to experiment and play with these and use them because I think it's going to give the kit so much more life. So when you order the, the big thing from Ralph, um, you can just order the boards by themselves with the remote control um, or, you know, like I did because, like I said, uh, I always, always want to keep extra pieces. So Ralph also adds the lighting and I've got all the SMDs. If you guys have never um, got to use these yet, these things are really great. But um, just to show you there how cool is that I mean that's the light that's the that's the diode right there um, smaller than a pinhead so we have the red the blue the white we have the green we have the resistors we have orange LEDs red LEDs uh, and shrink tube which is all provided and it, it wasn't a it's not a bad price at all. So guys, I, I heavily, um, I recommend if you're looking to uh, upgrade and enhance your model kits. Um, and uh, Ralph does a lot of sci-fi, but he also has other things that he does. Um, he can help you with pretty much anything if you want to email him. Um, go check out his site at www.tenantcontrols.com and take a look around. I mean. Um, great site, uh, lots of product. This, you know, Ralph is very um, invested in helping us um, bring our models to life. Uh, so, there is Tenet Controls. So, what's next? Well, the biggest thing, guys, is when starting a project this size, um, you want to do your research. And there's a guy that's over on Sci Fi Fantasy with us. Um, he's posted a lot of great reference pictures. I have them downloaded on my, my computer, but I did print a few reference photos. And I just wanted to show you guys what I'm talking about on the details. So this is the studio print of the model. This is what they built. And I'm just going to bring the top of this, um, kind of show you side by side here. Um, zoom out just a little bit. So. Um, except for the lifeboats and the detail. But if you look at the studio model, you can see these little raised details. And I don't know how well that's coming on the camera, but I will show you when I play it to the model. Um, this is stuff that I'm going to actually add. So there are, is going to be some scratch building to this. Um, I definitely suggest you guys look at investing in Styrene. And I use, you know, Evergreen um, is where I get all my Styrene from. So there is going to be some um, scratch building because there's a lot of detail that got lost on the molding of the kit and, and and the sad thing is sometimes they can't get everything in there that's why we have the after effects that's why we do the scratch building that's why we do the things we do um, so uh, but again do your homework get the reference photos that you want um, like I said I have them on my computer but I also printed some off so here's the enhanced detail on the bridge area um, I just brought this one out for, for lighting purposes because I am going to add an SMD here to light up the name. Um, so that's just the reason I printed out this one and then to get my reference for my navigation lights. Um, here's that detail on the warp nacelle that I told you. You kind of can see it on the kit, but it's not really there. And then these extra little pieces here. I want to make sure... Um, I'm doing this shit justice. And then um, just some reference photos of the different sections of the painting and stuff they did. This kind of yellowed out on me. 
um, but it does show some weathering on the ship because she does go in the atmosphere now so um, we're gonna add a little bit of that and then also um, he also helped because with doing the deflector dish he did this nice little template right here and I've shrunk it down and then I'm going to cut it out and adjust it to the model but this is just a bulkhead to help with um, not let it, letting the deflector dish shine on its own and not having any of the white light that we're going to be using from the LED strips to uh, interfere with that. So with that um, show you guys uh, basically my primary lighting is going to be all this uh, for the windows is just LED strip tape same with the nacelles. So the last thing I want to talk about today um, is, guys, uh, I don't know if you follow Sci-Fi Annecy or Amazing Scale Modelers or Model Builder International or any of the other groups that I talk about all the time on this show. Um, but I think, you know, you, you guys, if you're, you're trying to do things costly, you know, at, you know, a decent price, you should. And one of the sites I've been using, it's kind of weird, my daughter uh, told me about it, was Wish. And not bad discount site. Like I said, um, if you, uh, you you order on there, and pretty much everything comes from China, so it does take a while. But um, I told you guys I was waiting on the delivery to get so I can get started on this, and it's my drill bits. Um, zoom in here so you guys can see these. So I think I got these. There's a hundred here, uh, give or take. Um, of these drill bits all the way down to 0.5 millimeters and that's the one I'll be using for most of the window work um, I got them for like seven bucks with shipping and you know can't say enough I mean some of the things you get are great some of them you know are not so great but if you guys are looking um, you know for toggle switches on off switches um, pretty much you can find model related stuff on there, the back stuff we use. Um, I check it out. Go to wish.com, um, download it on your phone, Wish app. Um, check it out, see what you think. Um, you might be able to find some things you want. So, with that, this is also Mother's Day weekend. So, um, pretty much, I'm just doing a reveal video this weekend. Also, my daughter's 16th birthday tomorrow. So, there will be very little building if any this weekend um with that i want to wish all you guys a great rest of your weekend and for those that are you know uh don't forget to wish your mom a happy mother's day don't forget to wish your wife's happy mother's day uh, you know and we will uh talk to you next week when we return to the bench so have a great weekend guys bye We're alone, in an uncharted part of the galaxy. We've already made some friends here, and some enemies. We have no idea of the dangers we're going to face. But one thing is clear. Both crews are going to have to work together if we're to survive. That's why Commander Chakotay and I have agreed that this should be one crew. A Starfleet crew. And as the only Starfleet vessel assigned to the Delta Quadrant, we'll continue to follow our directive to seek out new worlds and explore space. But our primary goal is clear. Even at maximum speeds, it would take 75 years to reach the Federation. But I'm not willing to settle for that. There's another entity like the caretaker out there somewhere who has the ability to get us there a lot faster. We'll be looking for her. And we'll be looking for wormholes, spatial rifts, or new technologies to help us. Somewhere along this journey, we'll find a way back. Mr. Paris, set a course for home. Aye, Captain.